The AI audiobook feature within 11 labs is so impressive. If you want to take a story and turn it into a very rich audio experience with multiple characters, multiple voices, multiple accents, you can accomplish all of that in 11 labs studio. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that and all the tips and tricks involved. So without further ado, let's get to it. So over here in Microsoft Word, I wrote a funny short story called Chad Ventures. Now, what I want to do here is I want to narrate this in different voices. So to create a narrator voice, and then you see how I have different characters saying different things and they're having a dialogue. I actually want it to match the individual, the actual voice. So we're going to have a couple of different voices here and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Now, bear in mind, I just wrote a couple of sentences here to illustrate the example, but you can have entire books that you can turn into 11 labs audiobook files. So where do we go to do that? Once you are signed into 11 labs, you're going to go down to the studio section under products and you're going to select create an audiobook. And now we see this pop up window where it says create an audiobook and it asks us to upload a document. Just make sure it's in one of these formats right here. So I saved my file as dot docs so I know it's going to work. And this is asking for a default voice, which will likely be the narrator voice. And then it's going to auto assign voices. If we select this on, it does mention that it's going to take a little bit longer to go ahead and generate but this is where you get the cool effect of 11 labs assigning voices to your different characters. So for the default voice, which is going to be the narrator, I'm going to go ahead and select the voice. Now, if you want to listen to how different voices sound, you can just hover over and press the play button. So let's see what Aria sounds like. There is no greater harm than that of time wasted. And let's see what Roger sounds like. It is not so important to know everything as to appreciate what we learn. I think this is a great narrator voice. Now, don't worry if it sounds a bit robotic because we can actually tweak the settings and I'll show you how to do that in a second to make it sound a lot more ultra realistic. So I will select Roger as the default voice. So now I'll upload the actual content that I wish to use. So it's called chadventures.docs. And then I'm going to make sure that the auto assign voices option is checked on. And then I'm going to click create. You'll see it says over here creating 0%. It actually took just a couple of seconds and then it says not converted yet. Now we'll go ahead and select the actual project. And what you can see here is if we want to change the name of the document. So maybe I want it to just be Chad Ventures. I could change that to Chad Ventures. We can also have it be several chapters, but ours is a short story. So we're just going to keep it one chapter. Now, this might look a little bit intimidating, but we're going to go ahead and demystify a lot of these settings here. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to use it very seamlessly. So if I just go ahead and press play, we can listen to what 11 labs decided was the best voices. But I guarantee you we're going to tweak that quite a bit. And by the end of this, we're going to come up with a really great sounding audiobook. So I'll go ahead and play this right now. And by the way, to play it, we just hit the play button. But what's interesting interesting is we can also just select certain things and then it will just play the selection. Now, if I go ahead and deselect it and then I come here, you'll see that over here in the bottom left, it says playing until end. That means if I press play, it's going to play this entire document through, which I want. So we'll go ahead and listen to it now. I stepped into the lunchroom and immediately caught the tail end of what had to be one of the most absurd conversations I'd ever overheard. Two of my classmates, Chad and Angela, were deep in discussion, if you could call it that. Angela, I need you to subscribe to my genius new YouTube channel, Chad announced, eyes wide with excitement. Angela blinked a few times and answered reluctantly. Um, okay, what's it called? Epic Chad Ventures, he said proudly. I review soup in slow motion and occasionally scream at wildlife. She stared at him like he'd grown an extra head, with no brain matter inside, obviously. That sounds worse than trying to explain memes to your parents on speakerphone. 
I'd honestly rather watch a 10-minute unskippable ad about sand. They stared at each other in awkward silence, then suddenly burst into hysterical laughter. Just as quickly, they stopped, locked eyes again, and pretended the conversation had never happened. So, as you can see, I'm not too excited about this because some of it sounds a bit robotic. I'm also trying to make it funny, so I want some of the voices to actually be exaggerated, right? So, what we can start with, since we already generated it and it used some of our credits, you can see your credits here and how much you have left. I'm currently on the scale plan, which Eleven Labs has hooked me up with because I'm an affiliate, and it costs about $330 a month, but they have really cheap plans that start at just $5 or $10 a month. If you're curious and want to try it, I will link the affiliate link in the description of the video. And I will also link in the description a tutorial series that I'm creating for 11 Labs, where you'll see the affiliate link as well, but you'll see a whole plethora of AI tutorials as it pertains to the 11 Labs platform. So currently, I patched up these two videos for 2025, and I'm working on the third one, which is going to appear right here, and that's based on audiobooks. So that being said, let's now play with some of the settings. So if I click this icon here, we can actually go ahead and play with the settings of Roger's voice. Something I highly recommend when you're doing audiobooks is increasing the style exaggeration. Now you don't want to increase it too much because higher values can lead to a lot of instability. And the other thing I want to do is decrease stability. Now again, you don't want to go too low on it, but you also don't want to go too high because it can make the voice sound very monotone, which I believe it kind of does at the moment. We can also increase and decrease speed, the volume. I've covered a lot of these in the previous tutorials, so please check those out. But what I will do is I will go ahead and I will save this. Now, something important to point out is that it's saying that this change will affect six paragraphs. This is great because when we go and regenerate this, it doesn't count all of the characters of this entire document, only the ones that they are asked to change. And right now we're just changing Roger, who's the narrator, so it's only changing the narrator's part. And now I wanna see what Roger sounds like, so I will select this paragraph here, and I will select play, and it's just going to play the selection. I stepped into the lunchroom and immediately caught the tail end of what had to be one of the most absurd conversations I'd ever overheard. Two of my classmates, Chad and Angela, were deep in discussion, if you could call it that. So I could probably make this a little more exaggerated, but for the purpose of this example, I think it's good. Now, I actually want Chad to definitely be a bit more exaggerated. So here, what I will do is I will choose Chad's voice, and here it's recommending that it's Drew, which is fine. And what I am going to do is I am going to enhance the exaggeration, and again, I will bring the stability down a tad. And now I'm going to save this. And once again, it's showing us where the changes are going to occur. I'm fine with that. So I'll go ahead and save that. Angela, I need you to subscribe to my genius new YouTube channel. Chad announced, eyes wide with excitement. Angela blinked a few times and answered reluctantly. Um, okay. What's it called? So that's extremely robotic. Um, okay. What's it called? I don't like that. So we're gonna go ahead and change that. So when I go to Angela and I click on this icon here, you can see that it's saying that it should be Rachel, but I might wanna use a different voice. So let me see what Jessica sounds like. If you spend your whole life waiting for the storm, you'll never enjoy the sunshine. I actually like that a lot more. It seems more vibrant and in line with the personality that I want the character of Angela to have. So here, once again, I'm gonna increase exaggeration, decrease stability. I will save it and now it's important that I select and now it's important that I select generate so it can go ahead and generate everything based on these suggestions that I gave it. So here I really want to hear what Angela sounds like so I'll select all of these paragraphs here that include Angela speaking and I will press play. Angela blinked a few times and answered reluctantly. Um, okay. What's it called? Epic Chad Ventures, he said proudly. I review soup in slow motion and occasionally scream at wildlife. She stared at him like he'd grown an extra head, with no brain matter inside, obviously. That sounds worse than trying to explain memes to your parents on speakerphone. I'd honestly rather watch a 10-minute unskippable ad about sand. 
They stared at each other in the awkward silence. So I actually really like the way that that sounds. To me, it sounds ideal. So now I wanna show you a couple of helpful tips and tricks. So first of all, let's say I listen to this paragraph here, so I'll go ahead and play it. She stared at him like he'd grown an extra head with no brain matter inside, obviously. And then let's say I listen to the rest of it and I like the way this paragraph sounds. So what I can do is I can go ahead and select this paragraph and click this lock paragraphs to prevent changes. So if I select that, this paragraph will no longer be changed. Even if I go ahead and apply different settings and generate stuff, it will only be changed if I were to select it and then I was to unlock it. Then I can go ahead and make changes again. This is really helpful because maybe I like the way that Angela sounds here, but here I'm still trying to tweak the way she sounds. So in that case, it could actually be quite helpful. And then the other thing I can do, so I'll show you here, is I could select this, I can unlock it. Now let's say I want to insert a pause between head and the part where he says with no brain matter inside, obviously. What I can do is I can actually go ahead and insert this break here. And if I want it to be longer than a second, I can actually select it and specify, let's say 2.5S. And what that will do is leave two and a half second break between head and with no brain matter inside. So now if I go ahead and I play this sentence, take a look at what happens. She stared at him like he'd grown an extra head with no brain matter inside, obviously. Really cool, right? Now, a tip here, if I wanted to get rid of it, if I just backspace and apply, it's still gonna revert to the one second. So the way to get rid of a break is you actually have to go ahead of it and then click the backspace or delete if you're before it, and that should get rid of that break situation. You also see here that we can undo and redo changes. We also have a generation history. This actually shows exactly what changes we made, and if we'd like to, we can restore a previous version, and then it will get rid of all of the revisions that you did after that. Now, the other really, really cool thing that you can do is you can actually direct the speech with your voice. So check this out. I can select this paragraph here, I can go to the microphone option and then here what I can do is actually select record audio and then I could read this and place emphasis on whatever parts I feel there needs to be emphasis on. So for instance, if I was to record the audio, I could say they stared at each other in awkward silence, then suddenly burst into hysterical laughter right, giving it a little more feel. And then what it's actually going to do is take the narrator's voice, so Roger, but it will actually follow the tone and emphasis that I created when I went ahead and recorded over it. And it's a really helpful feature. That way it doesn't need to guess. It goes ahead and creates things exactly the way you want it. So even this uh, sentence here by Angela, I could say something like, um, okay, what's it called, right? Or something like that, or maybe you want it to be different, but then you have full control over it. So that is a really, really cool aspect of the 11 Labs Studio feature. And what we're learning right now is the create an audiobook. There's also create an article podcast. I'll cover all of these in the next couple of weeks to months. But if you have any questions on anything that I covered that has to do with creating an audiobook, please mention it in the comments section and I will aim to respond to every single person that puts something there. So with that being said, I appreciate all of you for watching this video in its entirety. It took a really long time for me to create it and edit it. So hopefully you appreciate it and I'll see some of you in the next video. Cheers. Thank you.